I got you. Already at this guy. Okay. I'd like to call this public hearing to order on February 14th concerning the Community Choice Aggregation Program Local Law. Uh, please rise. We'll touch the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Town Clerk will read the uh, notice. Please take notice that the Town of Clinton will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, February 12, 2019, postponed to Thursday, February 14, 2019, at the Town of Clinton Town Hall, 1215 Center Road, Rhinebeck, Town of Clinton, New York, at 6.25 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as the matter is reached on the agenda, concerning proposed Local Law 1 of 2019, entitled Community Choice Aggregation Program, pursuant to Article 16 of the New York Town Law. The local law will take effect immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State. Complete copies of the proposed local law are available at the Town Clerk's Office for inspection during regular business hours. All interested persons and citizens shall have an opportunity to be heard on said proposal at the date, time, and place aforesaid. Okay, you've heard the reading. Now the procedure will be you can make your public comments, step up to the microphone, you're talking to, uh, to the board, give your name and your address so that we can record it. And it's only about this Community Choice Aggregation Program, CCA as it's fondly referred to. So who's first? Anybody. Anybody. Okay, come on. <laughs> Go for it. It's free. <laughs> I'm Judy Canham. I live on Longview Road. And um, you know, thanks for the, um, I guess the initiative, timely interest in the CCA. Um, I, I attended a few meetings. I did, actually did attend one presentation um, to interested community members about this um, aggregation plan. I think that the board has um, done some good necessary work to look into the advantages um, of seeking such, um, I guess, a process that gives the members of the community an opportunity to be a part of alternative energy um, at a more affordable cost because as a community we're coming together. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think it's something we should try. So I support it, and I hope you'll support it, too. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll wait a few minutes in case we get a pile of people coming through the door. We're just waiting for any more comments concerning the Community Choice Aggregation Program, finally called CCA. Uh, just so you know why we're just sitting here. I think the, the program is, is a great idea, but I have a question. And the question is, will people have to individually contact their existing provider, or will that be done by the organization that is handling, I call them the power brokers. Will the power broker be handling that they, for they us? Will, they will handle it. 
Okay, thank you. If, if you're with Central Hudson, you're automatically enrolled. If you've already chosen a third party provider, yeah. you're going to stay in that third party provider until unless the, you opt out. Until the contract runs out that you yeah. have with them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Russ Tompkins, Schultzville. I, I didn't follow this too specifically, but I assume that this is a thing. You're looking for cheaper energy, and everybody in the town has a right to not participate in it. Right. I did get signed up to a, a program a few years ago, which was going to provide all kinds of solar. It was going to be cheaper. And when I got the bills, it wasn't cheaper. Luckily, I did get a rebate after it, but I'm trying to remember the name of the company, but it was half of your energy was provided by solar, and it didn't turn out to be cheaper at all. Oh. So I let it, and you had you had a penalty if you turned around and dropped it before the three years was up. Those provisions don't exist in this program. <clears throat> okay, anybody else? Okay, then I make a motion to return to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Now we'll start the regular town board meeting. Yep, 630. 6.30, okay. <laughs> I'd like to call the regular town board meeting on February 14th, 2019 to order. Please rise and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay, we're gonna, if you don't have a program or agenda, there's one back in the corner by the water container there and you can follow the sequence in which we're going. The first item is approved minutes and we had a lot of minutes, a lot of activity since the last approval of minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 9th, 2019 reorganization minute meeting. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 9th, 2019 regular town board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 17th zoning revision workshop. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 24th 2019 special meeting executive session. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 31st public hearing creek on the Creek Meeting House. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 9th, 2019 reorganization. Yep. We already did. So we did that. Sorry, right? Oh, that was mistake. a duplicate yep. one. Sorry. sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks familiar all of a yep. sudden. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all the minutes now. And they're all on the town webpage under town clerk minutes, and you can read them all in detail. Okay, the next thing is public discussion. This is discussion on agenda items. That's why I said to pick up the program so you knew what, we're t what you can talk to, because other things you can talk, but that's at the second comment section. Is anybody gonna wanna talk at the beginning? Okay, I just wanted to know, otherwise I won't open it. I make a motion to open the meeting to the public discussion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, same rules as before. Hop up here, name, street or something, address, and uh, talk to the topic. Cynthia Cook, 31 Willow Lane. And I just uh, want to thank the board for the public hearing and for the opportunity to designate the Creek Meeting House as a landmark. I think it's a, a wonderful step and I hope that you will do so this evening. And um, that's about all I have to say. But I'm happy to see also we have a lot of supporters of the Creek Meeting House nomination here. To, so I'd like to call attention to that so that you know that 
we're interested and we have a committed group. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oops, no, I thought she was going to say no. something. <laughs> Didn't know. Anybody else? Okay, hop up. You can talk more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Canham, Longview Road. Um, I'm also here to speak in support of the landmark designation for the Creek Meeting House. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to legitimize the historic value of this um, property. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that people that live in Clinton and visit Clinton, um, it kind of gives legitimacy and importance to, um, to the community. Um, I think it helps us be a little more proud of where we live. Um, it you know, creates um, a subject of interest uh, for those of us that are here and for those of us that want to visit. I just think there are a lot of positives um, and I want to thank you for uh, giving <coughs> us the opportunity to um, you know, make that happen. I just think it's a, a real plus for the town of Clinton. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Bernadette Ducat, and I'm on Cookingham. And I would also like to say that I'm in favor of it. And I, and I want to state it because when I've only been here for two years, but when I came, that was one of the first places that was talked about to me. And they said, oh, you've got to go see it. And so I think it is really important as a local Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Merida Wells from Allen Road, and I want to second what everyone, maybe third or fourth, what everybody has said. Um, when I, a uh, few years ago, I did a short article for Rural Intelligence on ten, 10 of my favorite things in the town of Clinton, and one of them was the historic uh, meeting house, and I thought it was stunning, and that's how I actually reached out to Cynthia to get more information on it for the article. And it's a place I take, you know, all my guests, uh, we always drive past it and point it out. I think it's an amazing place. I'd love to see it protected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, yes, Rich. <coughs> Dick Caller, Deer Ridge Drive. I'd like to speak to the public here, the uh, Creek Meeting House. I've been involved with it for some decades now, and an awful lot of people have worked hard to maintain it in its original condition. The building is now 242 years old, and a few years ago we put a modern high-tech roof on it, um, the intention being to extend its life another 242 years. So uh, please support uh, this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Anyone else? Okay, uh, we'll end this. I make a motion to return to regular order of business. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Now we're going to supervisor's comments. I don't have too many tonight. One on February 18th, that's next Monday, in case you haven't looked at a calendar lately. President's Day, the town offices, highway department, court offices, and court will be closed. Uh, Justice James Brands was appointed by the Clinton Town Board to fill the vacant town justice seat on January 24th, effective February 1st to December 31st, 2019, due to the resignation of Town Justice Russell Tompkins. And we thank Russell for his past service and being on the, as a justice. I also want to mention that Brennan Carney was appointed by the combined Clinton and Rhinebeck Town Boards to fill the vacant County Legislative District 11 seat on February 6 and effective until December 31st, 2019, due to the resignation of Joel Tyner. She is a Rhinebeck resident, and I'd just like her to stand up a moment just so you could see her. She can make comments later, but just so you can recognize her. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> that's all my comments. See, I told you to be short. Reports, planning board. Uh, 
planning board had two meetings. The first one was on uh, the 15th, January 15th. There were uh, three items on the agenda. One on uh, an applicant on Zipfelberg Road looking for a variance to construct a, um, a studio on her, on, on her property with uh, running water, um, which has always been an issue of controversy in the town. Um, the uh, planning board gave a neutral recommendation and sent the application to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, an applicant on Sodom Road looking to install ground-mounted solar panels. Um, planning board asked for more information. Declared lead agency set a date for public hearing. And a uh, third item, an annual permit renewal for RV Inner Lake Campground on Lake Drive, which was approved. Uh, second meeting on February 5th, also three items on the agenda. Um, the people on Sodom Road are back for the, uh, for the public hearing on their ground-mounted solar panel. Uh, a number of the neighbors showed up. There were some concerns about visual, uh, the visual aspect of it um, and screening, buffering, that kind of thing. Um, so the applicant was uh, sent away and advised to uh, submit a site plan with details about um, uh, about the coverage. Uh, applicant on uh, Salt Point Turnpike in for a lot line adjustment, which was granted. And then the um, uh, the biggest of the three on North Creek Road, uh, applicants who had recently purchased the uh, what used to be called the Adrian's Farm, uh, were in for a fairly uh, extensive discussion, uh, wanting to convert the property into a uh, with a farm store and wine tasting and also perhaps a conference center. Uh, for weddings and gatherings of one sort or another. Uh, many permits required, site plan, of course, uh, special use permit, as well as numerous building permits and uh, SDS permits from the Department of Health. So no action was taken and escrow was established for the town planner and the town engineer to review the site plan. Uh, end of report. Thank you. Next one is Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals met on January 24th. There was one item on the, on the agenda, but it was a very lengthy discussion. The applicant I mentioned previously on Zipfelberg Road uh, came in to talk about uh, interpretation she had received from the zoning enforcement officer uh, about uh, whether she was allowed to uh, build this, uh, uh, convert a barn basically into a studio. The issue having to do with running water, uh, which is not allowed in the town of Clinton for uh, in accessory structures if the uh, applicant does not meet the, the required zoning uh, minimum, acreage, uh, minimum acreage for the district, which in fact uh, this particular applicant does not. And after, so she appealed the, uh, the, the zoning officer's decision and after lengthy discussion, the ZBA upheld his decision and rejected her application. End of report. Thank you. Next one is Conservation <coughs> Advisory Committee. Uh, the CAC met yesterday on February 13th. There was a review of the benchmarking program and a discussion of community choice aggregation law that's before us tonight. Uh, the Dutchess County Environmental Management Council is meeting later this month and each of the CACs in the county give a report on their activities. Barbara Mansell will be submitting the report highlighting the five educational programs co-hosted co by the CAC this past year with the library. Uh, and the report also describes our progress made in the Clean Energy Communities and Climate Smart Communities program and the creation of the aquifer overlay map as part of the zoning revision. And a report. Okay, Recreation Committee. <coughs> Excuse me. The Recreation Committee met uh, the last Monday of the month. And um, we, uh, I believe Carol has the information on the camp that we're uh, conducting in uh, 2019. The camp dates are there. Uh, and uh, that's through July 8 through 12, July 15 through 19. That's the first two weeks. And, and then August 5th through 9th and August 12th through 16th. Residents uh, will pay $75 a week and non-residents would be paying $225 a week. Uh, we're still looking at 
doing a men's basketball league. I know we talked about it last year, uh, did not materialize, but we have hopes it will this year, which will utilize the basketball courts uh, when uh, the residents aren't using it, and it'll also bring in some revenue toward upgrading the, uh, the park itself. So that's yet to be determined. Uh, we're looking at uh, getting some new equipment, like some picnic tables, benches, and new grills for part of, uh, this is all Fran Mark Park, by the way. Uh, and uh, we're hoping to do that soon. Um, we uh, also are looking at uh, <clears throat> uh, Friends Park. We're taking a real hard look at that because there's some things that are needed there. Um, and uh, uh, the pavilion is being booked already. Uh, and uh, that will be um, $150 for residents, $250 for non-residents, $350 for organizations, and $700 for commercial rentals, which I doubt very much that we have. Um, the committee is also moving on trying to put together a plan to do Community Day in the fall this year. Um, I think the community is ready for it. I'm going to, we're going to do that with no money, but we're going to do it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> anyone that's interested in giving input or perhaps even doing something for Community Day, I would ask you to call either Dan Harkenrider or myself, Nancy Cunningham, and uh, we'd welcome any kind of comments at all. Uh, uh, the park will open on Memorial Day, and it will be th uh, that weekend, and it goes right on through till fall, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Building inspector. <coughs> oh, me again, yes. Mm -hmm. um, building inspector uh, had issued eight permits during this period and uh, six COs and CCs. Number of title searches were six. Uh, the number of miles that he logged this time were 67 miles. Uh, I gotta believe some of that was because of the weather. The uh, costs of construction uh, totaled $260,000, and the biggest part of that was a uh, uh, accessory new dwelling on uh, 126 Cody, Cody or Coyote, excuse me, Coyote Ridge. End of report. Thank you, zoning administrator. <clears throat> Uh, okay, in the month of January, uh, zoning minister, administrator reviewed 15 permit applications for uh, various range of items. Uh, in terms of uh, specific actions on Fall Kill Road, uh, there has been an issue with um, uh, cleanup, uh, and a trial date has actually been set for, um, for town court as a violation of the zoning code. Uh, the applicant on Zipfelberg Road, whom I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, zoning administrator was working with her and issued a um, issued a determination, which was uh, ultimately supported by the uh, the ZBA. Um, there's an, an ongoing interpretation on Deer Ridge Drive. Uh, the applicants were in for a lengthy meeting in December and uh, that was tabled for uh, further discussion uh, at the February meeting, which will be coming up shortly. Um, Old Adrian's Farm, which I also mentioned previously, issues having to do with site plans and special permits and building permits and uh, such things as that, which is ongoing. Um, on Hollow Road in, um, um, I'll forget, anyway. Uh, the, the old general store in, in the hamlet there on Hollow Road, Clinton Hollow. Uh, complaint has been received for property there containing unlicensed vehicles and boats being stored on the property, so the zoning officer is investigating that. He's also held meetings with the construction company who is working in, uh, over in the Crimson Hill subdivision which was uh, basically abandoned for some period of time, but has now come back to life. And uh, on, a, on a general issue, as opposed to specific, there have been numerous inquiries 
and perhaps something we'll need to address with the zoning issue, uh, zoning workshops having to do with wedding venues and um, Airbnbs, which uh, Airbnbs will be covered as part of the new zoning plan, but wedding venues are not addressed. So that might be something we need to talk mm -hmm. about. End of report. Thank you. Next one is highway. The highway um, sanded town roads eight times during the period of uh, January 3rd through uh, January 29th. They also plowed four times during the period of January 20th through January 30th. Uh, cleaned many, cleaned and repaired the trucks because every time they go out like that, they need to work on them again. So that's an ongoing thing. They uh, uh, cleaned catch uh, ditches and catch basins because of the melted snow and the overflow of water. They spread gravel and stone on soft uh, spots on Kansas, uh, stone house and other dirt roads. They removed dead trees from Maple Lane, Lake Drive, Schultz Hill, and Mountain View using the shared bucket truck, which is great. And they did a lot of dirt patching, which is ongoing. End of report. Okay, thank you. Scenic and historic roads? Uh, nothing, no activity, no meeting this month. Library. Uh, since our last meeting, the library trustees canceled their January meeting, but they met uh, this past Monday on February 11th. Due to the success of the annual appeal this year, uh, they are moving forward with plans to make improvements to the facility over the course of the coming year. Um, they approved new carpeting in the library and plans are being made to repaint the space. The operating hours of the library are changing very slightly. On Friday evenings, they are closing at 7 p.m. now instead of 8 p.m. And finally, there was a devastating fire that destroyed the Pleasant Valley Library in November, and donations from all over the region have made it so that they could reopen that library or in a temporary location at uh, Magia Como Lane. And uh, the Clinton Community Library temporarily loaned a large table, some children's furniture, and two children's computer stations, and those stations were replaced with children's tablets. End of report. Oh, okay. Cable vision. Nothing to report this month. Zoning revision. So we had a meeting uh, last Thursday, at which time uh, there was a lot of discussion as to how to make the uh, the process a little more clear. Um, and I know that Elliot uh, had worked on some things, so maybe Elliot can uh, outline some of the things that you did to hopefully make the uh, the process clear. Well, uh, in a nutshell, I went through the individual sections and we, we uh, rearranged them basically, we titled them so that all of the sections, there are something like 120 give or take, all follow, the titles of all of these sections follow a similar format, with it starting with a number followed by the name. This way they are in numerical order as opposed to the way they are now where some of them are in alphabetical order and the others are in numerical. So that presumably will make it much easier to find when we tell people next week we're going to be discussing sections X, Y, and Z. They can simply go to the list and there will be sections X, Y, and Z. And then you also added a, an index? And a contents, yes. I created the table of contents which lists the entire, the entire group of 100 and, again, give or take 120 sections from beginning to end. Also, of course, in numerical order. And hopefully, I'm not sure that we can link from one to the next because they're in different files, but right. perhaps there's a way to link from the contents directly to the section itself, which would be ideal. But even if there's not, at least it's all in one place. Um, and then the other thing I did was to uh, expand a little bit on the, um, the descriptive copy on that page of the, of the, uh, of the website to try to make it a little bit more clear as to what we're doing uh, for people who are not so deeply involved that they know these things without having to be told. Um, I put all that information on a flash drive, which will go to Fred at some point, hopefully tomorrow. next week or so. Tomorrow. And tomorrow, mm -hmm. fantastic. And he will upload it uh, onto the website and then we can all certainly look at it and not carved in stone by any means if anybody has any 
you know, suggestions or questions about one thing or another. So uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the, uh, the thoughts were that um, something that we had discussed was one thing, uh, if you have a question or a comment uh, of some changes and you can't come, you can certainly email me and I will uh, basically report that information. Uh, my information is on the website. Uh, and then secondly, that after we've had a discussion and uh, completed what we think is our revision of whatever that section will be, you'll have up to another week to make comment and, and provide that so that when we meet next, uh, um, usually a week, uh, two weeks to three weeks, you know, afterwards, um, we can address it and hopefully put it to bed rather than delaying and, and continually right. and then, hashing it out. And then at the very end, when we actually... Well, then at the very end when we're all done, there'll be one public comments. So whatever comes in after that point would simply be filed away for future use when we have our public hearings. Sure. And, and the, the process will be that after we're done, uh, those sections will then be referred to the attorney for the attorney to make the final legalese of, uh, of what they feel is the appropriate language. And then uh, um, when it's all done, we'll, we'll have that public uh, hearing again for the, you know, the final approval. So next week uh, is our next meeting, uh, 221, on the sections we did not do last week. So um, any other f further comments, you can always email me or call me. Okay, Kinda thank report. you. Uh, the next thing is proposed transmission lines. Never ever, ever going saga. Nothing's really changed, but I'll still read this for people who may have moved into the area so they have an idea what might happen. New York State ISO independent system operator is advancing a $475 million project proposed by Transco to transport 2,100 megawatts of electricity. This is for the transmission line going from Albany to Pleasant Valley through Clinton. New York State ISO's final decision is expected in March 2019. Then the PSC will begin the Article 7 review process and local governments and others then can offer comments after reviewing the proposal. Uh, this decision was supposed to be made in January of 18. So, you know, we're really off on schedule. Two years delays is pretty common on all of this as we've been going through the process. There will be no no power line workshop after the town board meeting tonight. Any other reports? Uh, WIC hasn't met in months, so you haven't heard from me, but they actually do have a meeting at 8 a.m. tomorrow, so you'll start getting reports from me on them again soon. Okay. Um, one other item, which I guess eventually will be a report, but um, uh, what I would suggest is that maybe um, our next meeting we go into executive session to discuss what uh, items we'd like to do, uh, put into the negotiations of the highway contract and, and this way uh, uh, we can start that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Already? We just negotiated it last week. It seems like. <laughs> I know. Just finished. But it was three years ago. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll go into the first old business item, which clearly everybody was excited about the landmark designation for the Creek Meeting House. The, see where the, motion there is. Uh, the Clinton Historical Society wants to have the Creek Meeting House designated as a landmark building by the town so they can obtain funds to improve and maintain the building. The town board accepted their peti petition held a public hearing, and now can approve the designation. The designation and its inherent restrictions stay with the building, not with the owner. So that's just so everybody knows it stays with the property or the building. So at this point, I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves the resolution of 2019, authorizing that the Creek Meeting House located at 2433 Salt Point Turnpike, parcel identification number 132400-6566-02-562787-40, is hereby designated as a Town of Clinton Historic Landmark pursuant to section 250-55 of the Town Code. 
Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. You are designated. <laughs> Okay, the next item is uh, RFP for HVAC, that's the heating and cooling of the buildings for the theo of geothermal stuff. Uh, this RFP is for a three-year contract for the geothermal heating and air conditioning systems for the town complex buildings. This is for twice yearly maintenance and for repairs as, when needed. It is effective from June 1st, 2019 to May 31st, 2022, which is a little bit different than what we have in the package. It's just off by half a year. So that's what that is. I make a motion that the town board approves the resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves soliciting sealed proposals from qualified HVAC firms for a three year period, for a three year for the geothermal maintenance contract. Bids must be submitted to Carol Mackin, Town Clerk, 1215 Center Road, Rhinebeck, New York, 12572 by 10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 5th, 2019. The town board will vote on the submissions at the regular meeting on March 12th, 2019. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And the other one is for elevators. Uh, we actually have two elevators and we have, no, we have one real kind of elevator and then we have some stair lifts. So there's five all together, just so you know. This RFP is for a three year contract for the five elevators slash lifts in the town complex buildings. This is for twice yearly maintenance and for repairs when needed. It is effective from January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2021. I make a motion that the town board approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves soliciting sealed proposals from qualified <coughs> elevator firms for a three year elevator maintenance contract. Bids must be submitted to, the, to Carol Mackin, town clerk, 1215 Center Road, Rhinebeck, New York, 1215, 12-12572. By 10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 5th, 2019, the town board will vote on the submissions at the regular meeting on March 12th, 2019. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Could I, uh, just a question, Roger. Yeah. Um, for my edification, what does CPL stand for? That's the Morris Associates' new name. Okay, and the number is the same. Is it supposed to be the same or the different? Well, that's their project number. That's their, okay, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> okay, the next one is fee schedule for cemeteries. Okay, well, this is another uh, seemingly unending saga, but we are uh, working away and after considerable discussion with uh, various people who are uh, involved in the cemetery work um, and have been for a number of years. I put together, revised the fee schedule. Uh, if you look at the last page, you'll see the additions having to do with the cemeteries. No, oh, okay. And uh, at raised suggestion, I added a sentence at the end, at the very end, uh, trying to anticipate what are essentially unanticipated events, that anything other than what's included here is uh, to be negotiated, the price of that is to be negotiated directly between the plot holder and whoever provides the service. Um, town is, uh, can function as to administer the service and make sure it's done correctly, but will not get involved in the, in the financial arrangements for, the, for, those, uh, for those activities. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm hoping we can resolve this and move on to something else. Um, 
I would like to make a motion that Town Board approved resolution number of 2019 amended Town of Clinton fee schedule, or the, rather the Town of Clinton fee schedule amended February 14th, 2019 with the addition of the cemetery fees. Is there a second? Second. second. Question. Yeah. So you added in the line uh, um, in the bottom, um, but it seems like it's addressed on a flat fee, but the statement on the bottom sounds like it's more of, of an hourly fee. These would be in addition for overtime. Well, we're already charging more for overtime and weekends. So are we not designating what's the difference between overtime and holiday and I'm just not clear as to what overtime is going to be dictated. <laughs> and if we're letting it really be dictated by the the vendor, mm. then do we even need to get involved with that? Because they're well, negotiating that with the vendor. Well, that's actually one of the questions I raised. And the way the process has worked is that um, my thinking was the same. Why do we get involved in fees at all? Um, but the way the process has worked with the cemeteries and still does with those that we're not involved with is that the vendor sends out a price list every year. Mm -hmm. And rather than being charged at cost, they are the fees are increased. And so the money in excess of what the vendor charges is money earned by the cemetery, which can, can then go into maintenance or care or what have you. So the fees that are listed here are not actually the fees being charged by the vendor. They're being charged by the vendor to the cemetery. In other words, the vendor charges $500, the cemetery charges $700, and mm -hmm. $200 extra goes into the cemetery's perpetual maintenance and care or whatever yeah but the outside of just basic burials and cremation anything else like for example disinter excuse me disinterment which happens occasionally but very very rarely the cemeteries don't get involved in those at all so i, I wonder just making a blank statement that you know any overtime will be part of your negotiation with that third party vendor i mean You mean instead of what's here? Yeah, instead of what's there, because th this kind of dictates that we're actually assessing an hourly charge, okay, but we're fine. not assessing a dollar to that hourly right. charge. Okay. And since we're not really even setting those fees, then why even sure. why yeah. even state it? That's fine. I have two comments. One of them you've heard before. Yes. My comment is yep. under all tombstones nowadays, mm -hmm. there is a foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm so big so deep and all whatever it is depending on the size of the stone if that is at as the way it's listed here that's not part of the cemetery's responsibility mm -hmm. even installing it mm -hmm. or checking it right if it's put in by a person doesn't even it could be you me no and well no they require them to be put in by the same company yeah. So this way they're done correctly. Well, if, even if they de deteriorate and the stones fall over 20 or 30 years from now, who's going to be responsible for putting the stones back? You will. I'm not here. I'm not here either. I know. But, you know. Sure. Who Leave do you it to the young find? guy. <laughs> who do you go and find? You know, because a lot of people don't live You're in You're the this youngest area. here, so. <laughs> they, they move away, you know. So that was my concern, you know. <laughs> Should that be a town expense? Town it, expense means either it doesn't get done expense. or yeah. the town does it. Yeah, in the discussion basically. we had originally, um, if it's some minor readjusting or whatever of the stone, that the highway department uh, basically would do that as part of the maintenance. But if it was something beyond that, then we had to go out to a professional. Yes. To do yeah. It. In fact, Schultzville did that recently, where there was nobody to do it, and so the cemetery dug into its funds funds yeah and did it yeah the, the, and on the rare occasion when that happens i don't see any choice yeah. well that's why you want to make sure that the professional that's putting it in is right. truly professional and, <laughs> and has Actually, quality of work 
I think we have it in, I'd have to go back and double check because it's been a while, but in, in the regulations that it has to be done by an authorized. Yeah. And I don't think it has anything to do with our fee schedule here other than if we're charging for it. I, I just so. was concerned about 20, 30 years from now, how mm -hmm. do we cover the cost yeah. of doing something? That was my concern. I'd yeah. just say that we're dictating who, who's putting it in so that we know it's okay. getting done right. And it's not really, unless we're charging a fee for it, it doesn't need to yeah. be part of the fee schedule. And the other one is, uh, it's very interesting. Conventional infants burials for weekdays is $400. Mm -hmm. Cremation weekdays is $800. The box for an infant is roughly yay big by yay big by yay big. A cremation is yay big by yay big by yay big. So why should it be twice as much? Um, it just I would have, I geometrically, would it doesn't uh, make sense. I would imagine it has to do with the cost of actually digging. Because you have, well, you, you're only digging but you have post hole digger no, worth here. But the, I think we, our regulations are that the holes have to be a certain diameter and a certain depth. Well, they're put into vaults, right? So mm -hmm. the vault yeah. size. So, yeah. so there's an additional cost involved. Not the for cre cremation. The cremation is no, more. The there's a whole lot of other licenses that a crematory has to have than just digging but, a mm -hmm. hole. That's right. But so we're only talking of digging the hole prices here. These are only hole prices. These are not cremation prices. Mm. You know, just the hole. Yeah. So these should all be for digging ground and doing something. That's all these prices represent. And I, I, to me, it just seems. Well, I mean, the difference between a, a, a cremation box versus an infant box is double. So, I mean, to say it's double, I mean. Yeah, but a cremation is twice the price of con infants. It should be reversed. It should be reversed. reversed. Yeah. Fine. So reverse it. So take the cremation prices and cut them in half. I would say it's reverse. <laughs> I would just say make it reverse. What's that? I would just say make it reverse. Like take these three. Okay, fine. Then just switch them. So it's almost the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So is it? Take out infants on the top and put yeah, infants on the on the bottom. Switch the conventional on the cremation is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? <laughs> Please. I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me in 30 years. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> okay. Local law for community aggravation, choice aggravation program. Aggravation? Aggravation. <laughs> <laughs> aggravation program. Okay, the Is town, town board answer? must enact the local law to allow a community choice aggravation, fondly called CCA, program mm -hmm. sure to <laughs> exist the town of Clinton, to exist for the town of Clinton. After passage of the local law, then a CCA administrator is appointed to determine the electric supply rates, suppliers, and length of contract for the rates. The appointment of the CCA administrator and the agreement will be scheduled for approval at the March 12th town board meeting. A final CCA administrator is then appointed for the, by the town board to implement the process. The approval of the supplier will probably not be done until early September. So that, that's the process that we're talking about. What we have to do is we have to pass the local law so we can start doing something. And we get a first pass, they come back with some numbers, we look at it, we can agree or disagree or make changes, or go get some numbers from somebody else and go with them. But to do the process, we need the local law. And then we approve contracts, and then we go forward at the very end as uh, who's the supplier, what the period is, and we'll probably have a public hearing on it, or workshop, whatever. So that's that's the process. The law said something about multiple suppliers, did it not? Yeah. But how can you have multiple suppliers if you only deal no, with one No, they come company? back now with multiples. We pick what we want out of the multiples. But only one administrator. For one administrator. Yeah. Okay. We pick, you know, they come in with, right. you know, like you insurance policies from your insurance broker, you get three of them. Okay. You gotta pick one, which one you want. Well, that's sort of the deal that we have here. So that's what this is about. 
So then I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approve resolution number 2019, adopting local law of 2019 entitled Community Choice Aggregate, Aggregation Program, a copy of which is attached here to and made part of this resolution. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Well, one of the th oh. things, um, I, I mean, it's as far as talking about uh, you know, providing a, a choice is one of the, uh, the the old hydro plant in Wappinger is supposed to be kicking going, and I didn't make it to the uh, to the launch party, but uh, I think they have a community come and tour the plant uh, in the next couple of weeks coming up. So I plan on coming. But one of the things that they do uh, specify is that uh, you'll save money. So I'm going to check that out. So that might be an alternative to uh, to all of this anyway. Yeah, it's something that Jewel has mentioned. Yeah. They've, they've been in discussions with them. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of choices out there. Right. This is just so that we can do the process to start choices. Right. Until we had this, we can't really move ahead. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> We're not uh, doing the uh, choice thing here because we've got a res. A, contract to agree with and all that kind of stuff and I got to get back through the attorney to make sure it's good so we're skipping item six um, are we still looking at possible their jewel is our choice okay. yeah it's probably but okay. you know I, I, I can't do the document right. yet if right. we haven't done it right we got to have the local law before we can mm -hmm. do the document mm-hmm Okay, the next one is um, I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it re resolved that the town board approves accepting the 2018 audits of the tax collector and supervisor supervisor's finances. Is there a second? Second. All in second. favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thanks to the two people that did those. There's still two more left open. Okay, next one is tax surcharges. So um, basically, there's two resolutions here um, for the two years of 17 and 18. Um, this is a piece of property on the other side of uh, the Taconic uh, on Pumpkin Lane that actually borders uh, the property actually straddles both uh, Stanfordville and, and Clinton. So uh, part of the negotiation was to settle with both towns. Um, uh, on a price, um, and the price was really dictated by a, a sale purchase, um, which is a lot of the case when real estate is, you know, what's, what's it worth unless someone's willing to buy, buy it. So um, the tax collector is typically, uh, or tax assessor is typically uh, inclined to go along with that. So um, they came up with a price based on that stipulation. So I make a rule. I make <laughs> make a motion. Yes, thank you. I, I lost my <laughs> lost my mind here. I make a motion be it resolved that the town board approves resolution of 2019 that the town board hereby authorizes the attorney of the town of Clinton, Capilina, Rothschild, and e Egan, LLP, to enter into stipulation index number 2018-52189 with the attorneys for the petitioner, Vandewater and Vandewater LLP, Kyle Barnett, Esquire, in terms of which set forth attached stipulation, and hereby authorize the town attorneys for the town of Clinton, Capilina, Rothschild, and Egan, LLP, to sign the stipulation on behalf of the town of Clinton. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And following that was uh, for 2018, so this is for 2017. Make a motion, be resolved, the town board approves. Resolution of 2019 that the town board of the town of Clinton hereby authorizes the attorney of the town, Capilina Rothschild Negan, LLP, to enter in stipulation number, index number 2017-51913 with the attorneys for the petitioner, Vandewater and Vandewater, LLP, Kyle Barnett, Esquire, and the terms of which set forth the attached stipulation hereby authorizes the town attorney for the town of Clinton, Capilina Rothschild and Egan, LLP, to sign the stipulation on behalf of the town of Clinton. This is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Now we got the 
discuss solar, uh, zoning amendment for solar farms and windmills. So as just a primer for those watching and those in the audience, um, our current solar law is uh, solar and wind law combined together into uh, one and it allows roof mounted um, solar panels and it allows uh, ground mounted solar facilities up to 25 kilowatts which basically precludes somebody from having a solar farm if they had a large piece of property to do that. Um, so I've been working on splitting that law into two so that the wind portion of it will stand on its own and I've made essentially no changes to it. Um, and then to the solar portion uh, created a section for what would be referred to as tier three solar systems, which is would be a solar farm um, on lots that have 10 acres or more. Uh, it's a hefty document, so instead of spending the money on the attorneys to go through it first, I asked, I sent it to the board and asked for comments from all of them uh, first before, so that we could get it narrowed down to as best we could before sending it to the attorneys. Uh, I had an hour and a half long meeting with Ray where he gave me a bunch of notes and we worked on it. Elliot and I exchanged many emails. I had some conversations with people in the community. And this is where we're at. So if there were any other questions or yeah. things we wanted to change, yeah, let's go through it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there would be. My first one comes on page four, unless somebody has something earlier. All right. Page four, the square bracket at two, about a quarter of the way down. Mm -hmm solar panels be installed parallel yeah. to the roof surface. If they're installed parallel geometrically, that means the same distance mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But in, section, in paragraph one above, it says they could be eight inches at the highest the edge, hole. so they're not parallel. So I would say subject to one mm -hmm. above or something uh, I don't think one indicates that they're not parallel. It says that the highest edge of the solar panel can be eight, eight inches above the roof, but that doesn't say it wouldn't be parallel. This the whole says, thing would be at the this, same angle. This says parallel. You can't. They are in conflict with each other. Is all I'm saying. Those two statements are in conflict with each other. I just don't understand how. If you could explain it. Better. Well, if you if you're taking it like this, it's eight inches maximum here yep. on your roof. Okay. Yep. And the but the bottom of the panel would also be eight inches from. They're yes. parallel eight inches above. It's parallel eight inches so, above. So it's, oh, what no. it's supposed to say is that it's not supposed to be any further than eight inches off the roof surface. So if you're parallel, top and bottom are still eight inches. Yeah. That's not what number one says. This is, and honestly, this wording came directly from oh. what is in the law currently. But That doesn't make it right. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying. When you say solar panels are so pitched on like pitched roof mm -hmm. shall be mounted with a maximum distance of eight inches between the roof surface and the highest edge of the system. You're, you, you're looking at it as the highest edge, like the top of the roof. And no, it just the means top of the solar panel. The bottom could be on the roof. doesn't have to be. Could, All right, so we add the word parallel to number one there and figure well, out a way to... Well, you could take off edge, first of all, <laughs> you know, so edge may sound like it's different, but, you know, uh, and, and you can add in the word parallel. I mean, that's... Well, it, but now you're forcing it to be eight inches, the full length of the solar panel. Well, I think it's supposed to say it's not to be exceeding eight inches off the roof surface. If it says mounted with a maximum distance. Yeah. So it could be less than that. Right. I understand. Could be less. But it's that when you're installing parallel, parallel mean parallel lines. Mm -hmm. If you remember from geometry, mm -hmm. uh, says uh, they're the same distance all the way. Eight inches. And this says it's you can be eight inches on one end, the high end on the roof, and zero inches on the other end. All right. Well, for That's the record, I don't think it says that, but I'll clarify it so that it says parallel. <laughs> well, I'm just saying it. All right. But that's a conflict. Okay, next one I told you before, and you still didn't include it. On page five, little f near the top, mm. no trespassing signs. It says you can put no signs except for safety and sa signs required by other regulatory stuff. Right. No trespass signs 
you need to have them if you're going to take somebody to court who's going on your property. So we went all through this when we approved this particular section of the law. So these are all the original sections of the law. Mm -hmm. and, and the signs were basically not to be mounted on the solar arrays themselves. What you mm -hmm. put on your property as far as no trespassing has nothing to do with the solar law. And what they were trying to say is that, you know, someone doesn't put up this was done by Hudson Solar or whatever yeah, type of advertisement. What it what it what it's supposed to say is that you know, other than for hazards and warnings to the solar system itself, that's the only sign you can have on there. And that's what I said. You're putting no trespassing on your property. You're still allowed to do that. Uh -huh. To but, the limitations of what the sign law says. But here it's it says are not permitted. No signs except for safety and signs required by other authorities are permitted on the system. How about that? Well, it's part of the design requirements. So, yeah, that would be on the system. But, uh, All right. I think we're opening ourselves up there. Check with the attorney, see if he's happy with it. He was happy with it when he approved it the first time. I know, but he didn't understand, maybe. And you read these things and you use them. You know. Okay. Okay, the next one's down under F. That's the second line of that sentence. You have 110% of the electricity consumed on the site over the previous 12 months. This is for tier twos. Tier two things, yes. yeah. What if a homeowner has plans on significant increased usage the year of construction versus the prior year? For example, he decides he's going to get three electric cars which he didn't have before that's going to use more electricity than he had before because he was using gasoline cars well, then and be, it could exceed 110 percent no the solar system can't exceed more than 110 percent of the soul of the energy usage by the building so if okay. uh, if a consumer increases their energy usage it would actually put them more in line with the law the solar system can't generate more than 110 percent of the electricity consumed on the site oh, the so previous some, 12 months yes so if somebody got three more electric cars they would be increasing the energy consumed on the site so they would be less likely to go over the 110 percent you would be increasing your energy usage so the but, but the energy usage that the year. solar system can generate would also be allowed to go up then yeah but this says it can't go more than 10% over what was gen used last year. So no, the cars are being used you this year. You don't have a record of it. You're, it's not going to be in your file. Yeah, you don't have a record of yeah, it. Yeah, you don't have a file. So, you know, I'm just using electric it's cars time, as an example, but issue. they're yep. becoming quite popular. So how are they solving this currently in the law? I don't know. Not. We're not. Because <laughs> we went through this the last time. We approved it. Yeah. And this, this language actually came from the state. So this yeah. was... And copied like, language from the state because yep. that's what the grant that the state offers to homeowners when they apply for their the solar one. systems and this is up the to 10 kilowatts up to uh, you know 110 percent of usage so that's where that language came from was from the state now if you want to put in a, a, a blurb that says or estimated usage based on new construction I mean Fine. you know when it when an engineer goes in and, and, and calculates a house you know, they calculate the usage yeah, based on future usage. Yeah, some, I see what you're saying. For yeah. some period yeah, of time after, after it's done. Yeah. Somebody's not going to go to an electric heated house with solar, but uh, it could. Or estimated current usage? Uh, uh, estimated. Or estimated usage based on improvements yeah. or new construction. Yeah. Page six, number five, it's just above G, uh -huh. little five. Uh, shall comply with the existing lot size requirements specified for accessory structures within the underlining zoning district. Typically, that has been you're allowed three accessory uh, structures on your property. Now, how do you count we, solar? We exempted it. We don't. 
they're not counted as accessory. When we approved that last thing, that's what kind of got messed up with the uh, the small sheds, and we had to come back and right. and reapprove the law. It was we exempted um, uh, solar systems as counting as an accessory structure? But they have to meet all the requirements. But they have yeah. to still no, meet no, the no, setback right. and all the other yeah, requirements. Yeah, I just meant for counting purposes. Right, so, you, right. so they don't count. So they don't count. They don't count. That's not what you say in your accessory structure sections. Well, that's the definition that is currently wow. being used to. Was that the revised? Because yeah. we, we came I, back and revised it. Is, it. it is. So this is number page 24. It's, I took this one from the revision. Is that the new one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Page okay. 24. Well, it says accessory stru structures shall include but are not limited to tennis courts, yeah. garages, swimming pools, garden so tools, sheds, barns, yeah. and such All elements right. as satellite dish antennas, windmills, solar energy, and wind energy. So we take them out. Take them yeah. out. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. There you go. Number four, signage on seven is the same thing. What page? Seven. 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 Okay, that, sorry. That's a signage thing I said before. Keep out signs, trespass signs. On eight, uh, tree cutting. Um, it says the removal of existing trees larger than six inches in diameter, and it should say measured at four feet, mm -hmm. I took the six inches out. Nobody's gonna worry about six inches. Yeah, I took four a definition feet. that they that they use in uh, tree harvesting, which yeah, is but diameter at breast height is four feet, six inches. I know, So, and I just said four feet from ground, take out breast height, because if you're a short person, mm -hmm. a high person, you know, it, me, useless information. Coming down to the one bracket, right in the center, one bracket, uh, required? Yeah, added the word required, yeah. solar energy system required for the purpose of determining. Yep. It's just a word. Now we get down to three, that square bracketed three, a little below. The time required to repair any damage caused to the property by the installation and removal of the solar energy system. Um, I would say restore to usable condition. For example, if you had a hole, a hill, a little hill, three three foot hill in the middle of this uh -huh. thing, and you take the hill away, am I going to have to rebuild that hill? Or if there is a swale, am I going to have to rebuild the swale mm -hmm. after I do it? No. I would say restore to usable condition. Yeah, we discussed this earlier. We were having trouble with this. All right. I mean, it's just a, a better way of handling it because otherwise... What is this, number three? Yeah. Yeah, number three. We'll skip over a few pages. We do change, move ahead here. Okay, number 13, page 13. This is on the vegetation on solar farms, just so people understand in the context I'm talking about. It says... <clears throat> Solar energy system owners shall develop, implement, and maintain native vegetation to the extent practical, pursuant to a vegetation ma management plan by providing native perennial vegetation and foraging habitat beneficial to game birds, songbirds, and pollinators. Okay, first of all, I added to songbirds, what about rabbits and groundhogs? Uh, I didn't add deer and I didn't add uh, <coughs> foxes and all that stuff. The other one is... What are you adding? Rabbits and groundhogs. Okay. What about muskrats? They don't live... 
out of water. We take it. They live in water. What about chipmunks? Chipmunks, they eat, they don't eat grass. They eat acorns normally. <laughs> okay, now the other part comes up is where you say um, native vegetation. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the pasture grasses that grow around here are not native. Broom grass, orchard grass, Timothy, all of that. They're not native to here. You may think they're native because they were brought here, but they're not native. Okay, the other thing is all the lawn grasses are not native here. They're Kentucky bluegrass and all of those yeah. things. They're all not native here, okay? So this puts a very restrictive requirement here. Now, of course, you can't have loose strife because that's a, 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 not native and you don't want it and it generally grows in water. But there are a lot of other plants which people think are nice and native but they're on the endangered list too. So we're leaving out the words to the extent practicable yeah. here. It does say. Right. It does say twice to the extent yeah. practicable. I so understand, not, but you know. It's not required. It's not an absolute requirement. I know. It's just required. I just don't want somebody to get hung up on this thing and saying, hey. No, that's it's why we have a planning board. Yeah, it's gotta be something. Because these other things do not apply as native things and you would think that somebody would want to maybe even graze sheep or goats in there mm -hmm. and they would keep it all down but you got to give them something to eat and they'll eat everything and you got to give them grass and the kind of grasses are not native okay um just so everyone knows, this is all for, tier, for solar farms, not for like no. small arrays on your property. Yeah, solar <laughs> farms. <laughs> okay, down at still page 13, um, number two at the very bottom, the parentheses two. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to the fire department to find out what their snow removal requirements are? I, I did not actually, no. Um, Side access should be removed. So since we have two fire departments, what if they're conflicting? And what if they are different? Well, <laughs> which one do you follow? Or do you say if you're in East Clinton, you got to follow East Clinton? <laughs> so what, curiosity's sake, if I had a, a house without a solar farm and a driveway on it, what, what, what kind of snow removal am I required to have for the fire department? We'd say you're supposed to have it cleared. If you don't, we okay. can't get to you and it burns. Because <laughs> it's a simple fact. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I just. <laughs> so why would it be any different? I don't know that it would be any yeah. different. Is why what I'm saying. I don't know why I have to. Well, I'm just just trying to be concerned. Okay. Question. Right. That's yeah. All. yeah, yeah. I just said check. <clears throat> but that's what we do. We yeah. we because by the time you get a snow plow that will go and plow it open, most of these places are a quarter to a, half, to a mile long. You can't get back there in time. Okay, the next one is, this is page 14, number two in the middle, bracket, uh, brace, um, parentheses two. It says, if the system isn't operating on a continuous basis for 12 months, mm. the town may notify the owner and operator to implement the decommissioning plan. What if you had an act of God that made the system inoperable? Well, or the it does utility? say the town may notify. So yeah. if there was an act of God, I'm sure the person could say, hey, I had an act of God. And then we also talked about this as far as if there was an ongoing investigation, if there was an ongoing application, um, it wouldn't necessarily be decommissioning uh, because it's it's oh, yeah. not just abandoned. It's in the process. Yeah, and, no, that, and the, and the fact that's is... Covered. You know, it, it's uh, that's the definition. Is if it's abandoned, then after a year we can come back yeah, and say yeah, we want to change yeah. the zoning or whatever for any property in the town. So that would also include yeah. right. solar but, systems. But if you have a mudslide coming down, you would be filing for an insurance, yeah. you know, claim or and what you, have and you. It may and take more than twelve months to get fixed. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's not a matter of getting fixed. It's a matter of being abandoned. Uh -huh. So that's the lack of use. No, it's it's it's, that's, it's, it's why it's the wording is abandoned. May. It's not abandoned. It's why the wording is 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 may notify. It. Okay. Right. 
not particularly there. <sighs> oh yeah, I had this conversation. Number 15 page in the block. Yeah. It says clustered residential, CR1, not allowed uh, to have a solar farm system there. So um, there are differing views on, I'm going to say this is Tactfully. Tactfully as I can. There are differing <laughs> views on this law uh, across this board, and I'm trying to um, yeah, thread the needle between <laughs> what is acceptable to some and not acceptable to others. Um, I would gladly include clustered residential, but I think that there are some people on the board that gladly wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to, uh, you know, find that middle ground for all of us. Well, the reason I bring it up, and I've said it before, it's not a surprise. Clustered residential is where one has, say, 50 acres, and you put all the houses on one acre lots in one corner, and all the rest of it is kept as open mm -hmm. property for community use or whatever. That's what that is. I'm saying one of the purposes of clustered residential is if it works, I don't think we have any, but if it works properly, you have a community water and sewage system. So yeah. you, you don't have 15, 20 wells, you don't have 15, 20 septic systems, et cetera, et cetera. So keeping that process moving ahead, my comment is for electricity, you can make it a self-sufficient community by putting a solar farm on this open property with all the restrictions of hiding it and all that sort of stuff. And that would be beneficial to the owners and to the community. Okay, that's why I say not allowed is I don't believe in it. It's defeating what we're trying to do with cluster development. Now, we haven't had any clusters, but that's beside the point. It exists as a zoning area. So that being the case, uh, you know, I truly believe it's not in keeping with the green energy that we're talking about today. Anybody want to refute that? You say I'm wrong? Not with your statement, but I don't think this is something that can't be revised at some point in time as time changes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to introduce this as a, a tool to... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean... The, and, and obviously, right now, that's not an issue. It may become an issue. And why can't it be revised at some point in time? We're talking about something down the road. We could have a cluster residential requirement come in two months from now. Right. This law will be passed roughly in two, three months, and it says he can't do it. So now we got to go through the whole process to revise this thing, to do a revision to this document. It's going to cost us $1,000 to get it rewritten, attorney fees to go through and reread everything and, and go through the whole process. Let's do it right the first time. All right. So right now there's only two CR1s that uh, in the town that I can remember um, that would be applicable. And they're both in the Clinton Corner Hamlet. Mm -hmm. So the ones on Salt Point, that's the 20 acres going up the hill. Mm -hmm. And then there's over on Clinton Corners Road, um, several of the properties over there are CR1s. So those are the only two that we'd be even looking at as far as CR1 uh, designations. Yes. Um, and, and, and I'll go back to what my comment's going to be on solar energy systems and the whole number three here um, is that uh, during our zoning revision meetings we've had many conversations as to what we want for the town and 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 now with this new law the way you outlined it I even have a second objection is that um, in page 12 agricultural we're taking away up to 50 percent of prime usable farmland that is never, I mean, if you look at ag markets, ag markets never want you to take away prime agricultural farmland. Well, by having people in town, say there's somebody with 100 acres and kids have all moved away, they can't farm it anymore. They have an option of subdividing it into 10, 10 acre slot lots, and then we got 10 houses, or they can make some money on their land and keep that land by putting a solar farm on it. Second part of the conversation is that right now, the way the law is, 
this is not treated as a commercial enterprise. And if you're doing a solar farm, it's a commercial enterprise. We're not taxing it as a commercial enterprise. Um, so there's an objection to that. And third thing is there's a recent report that actually shows that the, the congestion of a solar farm actually causes global warming. It causes hot pockets. So are we really being green by allowing for these mass farms of solar? Well, I think there's also an assumption that if the law passes, all of a sudden we're going to have 15, 20 solar farms. It's, on it's not topic. what is, it's what could be. And, and that's really what you're making the law to be. I mean, everybody having a solar panel on the roof where there's, there's cooling between solar panels from one house to the next is certainly admirable and what we should all strive for. But to, to create these mass solar farms, which in my opinion don't look very well, um, and the committee felt the same way, um, also taking away prime farmland, which we should be encouraging farming, encouraging farmland. And, and, and so, you know, there's, you know, uh, well, Greg, uh, who has the currents. I mean, he's renting out other people's farmland that they're not farming anymore, and he's doing it. So you can certainly rent out your, your sure. farm land, even though you're, you don't have family members to work your farm. But there are some people who just, who want other choices for their land, and they don't want laws in place telling them what they can do with their 100 acres, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's always true. People don't like zoning, period. Yeah. So they want to throw out all zoning. Well, I mean, this, the, with all due respect, um, like tonight is, we're going to have plenty of time to argue on whether this should be passed or not. I was looking for comments on So, I mean, one of the things that we also talked about and we didn't get to, which is the wind power. First of all, wind power in, in this area is just I not have, viable. That's why I kept it. Number two, it, it does kill bird of prey. Yes. Studies that show how many, you know, birds are killed by you know uh, wind, you know, uh, turbines, and so we so purposely through committee selected not to have certain things, and and that's why we made it very restrictive as to having wind turbines and having solar farms. And I essentially didn't change the wind. The wind portion. Of no, this. I'm just saying, as an overall conversation. Yeah. 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 As far as the usage of prime lands and stuff, uh, why don't you talk to uh, Soil and Water over in Farm and Home Center mm -hmm. and get their take on it, and to the uh, chair of the uh, county's uh, CAC. I don't know who it is over there anymore at the Farm and Home Center. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody there. Yeah, I know. Who and I'll then, see him tomorrow morning. And then, yeah, and the, uh, it used to be um, uh, Adams, but he's changed now, but the uh, Farmers Association for Dutchess County and Putnam County, what they think. I mean, just other mm -hmm. inputs is all, yeah. and I don't know what their comments But back to be. the question of uh, CR1s. CR1s, <laughs> I just think, you know. I don't agree. Should be a I have to go back and read that section on CR1s. My, I, mean, I think it's certainly certainly valid. I think the issue there would be visual impact. I'd be concerned about visual impact. Um, I, it's hard to imagine how it would be done without uh, creating a an eyesore. The zoning review, the zoning law on CR1 in and of itself for CR1 says that cluster develop when you do a subdivision, you're supposed to come in with yes. a clustered plan for 30, and you come in with a for uh, 30 acres chop or more. it, yeah, yeah, chop it up and take the word CR1 out and say cluster development if they're going to do that. I mean, I, I don't care, but. The process was for cluster development. I wasn't talking to CR1, but that's where it happens to be. Okay. Well, I mean, I, again, I understand the I, un, I follow your argument. I follow the principle. I just wonder whether it can be done without creating the kind of visual impact that none of us want. And I mean, and it was, there was a concern to a great extent, as Dean already said, it was concerned with the visual impact that underlay much of what we did three years ago when we created the existing law was to try to minimize to as much as possible <laughs> the visual impact and I don't I don't see, uh, it's hard to me to imagine how you would avoid that problem in a cluster situation where everything is so 
close together. That would be my concern with the cluster thing. You know, so like on farmlands, we allowed for, um, you know, 10 times. Yeah, 100, watt, 100 kilowatts. 100 think, kilowatts yeah. versus yeah. 10 uh, in the original yeah. law that would allow farms, which probably don't need to unless they're doing, you know, uh, milk, dairy, and, and have to, you know, heat the water, pasteurize the, the milk or what have you and, 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 and spend a lot of electricity. But that was um, for their own use. Probably. But that's yeah. primarily for their own use. And that's, that's, that was the whole thing is that everybody who's using this is using it for their own use. So if you had a, a community that wanted to have a central system for the whole community, just like a water system or I think that could probably be open for you know conversation, but to, to basically create a business and, and and sell off the electric, it's not what the town wanted. I mean, that's, well, that's you know, I was just talking for this cluster development type thing. Mm -hmm. That was all I was talking to. The rest of that wasn't changing. So you know, you take CR one out and just say cluster development, fine. That's what I was looking for, and that's for private use. It's not for. Right. I mean, you yeah. If you have extra, it goes to the central Hudson, but it's not generated a big volume. Well, I mean, this table is just for the tier three solar system, so I know. it would likely not be for private use. But well, that's why I wasn't sure how you'd cover it. If you put it in cluster development, it's still a, so a tier three construction. It's not a tier two construction. Mm -hmm. It's over twenty five kilowatts. Yeah. So it falls into this by default, that's all I'm saying. You could take CR1 out and then put in that, you know, with, I just put comment here, not covered on com community lands. Oh, on community land. Yeah, it's not in the back of the houses, not part of the houses or anything. The, the cluster proposals that have come before the planning board, there haven't been many, there have been a few. I understand. Very hard. As, as I think back on those things, I don't see where you could put solar panels. You may not. Then it doesn't apply. On any but of those. you you, you got to have it be there so that if you need it, you can do it. That's all I'm saying. You're not going to cut down a forest just to put up solar panels. Now you get everybody else unhappy with the trees being missing. Everybody else? <laughs> well, or you can simply not allow it, which is what we do here, which is another way to solve the problem. Well, I wasn't just talking to CR1. I was talking cluster development. Oh, I understand. Yeah, but with that, but it, cluster development opens up possibilities in other areas outside of the CR1 district. So that makes it more widespread. Oh, yeah. Rather than limiting it, it better. Yeah. yeah, I don't know we want to do that. But it may not pass muster going through the planning process. you got to do all the requirements for the planning process. So think about it. Mm -hmm. You got you got the mission. And before you read your next one, yeah, this this needs an extra column. These should actually be eight inches above the roof uh, for the parallel, and then on flat roofs, it needs a, another column for flat roofs, which could be two feet above. And then the, the, the other thing you need on the top is maximum re height requirements. Yeah, yeah, maximum. Yeah. Wind. wind. Do too much on wind. But we got some wind stuff here. Page 22. And this is the old screening issue, which I told you about earlier. Even though it's unlikely anybody will have wind, on uh, paragraph 5, mm -hmm. plantings for screening shall be of such height and width at time of planting so as to obscure the wind energy system from adjacent properties. You put the trees up, you block the wind, why put a tower up with a windmill on it? I mean, it's self-defeating. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's self-defeating. I think that was the point of the original law. <laughs> but, uh, so you, you gotta put a height limit, you know, seven feet, six feet or something like that. You're not gonna hide the tower. Uh, I and know you this. can't put an imitation tree there like they do for uh, uh, tele uh, telephone communications because uh, the tree branches stick out too far and they look terrible. No worse than windmills. Oh yeah, we'll get the windows. I'm the, we're not at windows on this oh. thing. 
Oh, windows, he said. Yes. So I we'll change it so it says uh, time of planting so as to obscure the wind energy system from adjacent properties at a height of eight feet. Eight feet's pretty high. Great. Seven. <laughs> Six. <laughs> I mean, the rotor itself's going to be a lot higher than that. Oh, so I know. I know. <laughs> the rotors are going to be longer than that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then on uh, the top of 23 is this no trespass signs again because this would be fun for It'll be on your property. Yeah, I know. What a fact of God. That's another thing, you know, a tornado comes through and rips up the wind tower and all that sort of thing. Well, if you have a no trespassing sign, then your tornado will keep out. Yeah, yeah sure it will. God doesn't go there. Okay. <laughs> Under definitions, page 24, glare. Uh, how measured and what limits? It says the effect of reflections of light with intensity sufficient as determined in a re commercially reasonable manner to cause annoyance, discomfort, or loss in visual performance and visibility in any material respects. Uh, that is very subjective. I may not like light at all. Others may take Don't all the light the they want. Um, how's it measured and what limits? One of the things that we discussed as to uh, the glare was the, uh, the frame to use like a, and that's a, a, a matted and black that, versus yeah, a yeah. silver chrome, yeah, which would reflect. Black or yeah, the issue that. with, the issue with glare, like, the, I'll let, I mean, I know solar surface. people hate the issue with glare because the studies have been done like water reflects more than a solar panel. If you have a pond on the adjacent property, it's going to have more glare than the solar panels True. on the adjacent property. Uh -huh. So they get they get touchy about the glare issue, and I'm certain that's why it's probably not listed as how you would measure it. So I mean that you know you put a restriction. Hmm? This is should be. A I don't know if glare is glare might be from the. Uh, Could also it's be from the nice surface well. of the panel panel itself too, not just the structure. And then we go to page 25, native perennial vegetation. That's the big discussion on grasses. Yeah, then I. Then we go on page 27, top there where it's 110%, and that's the earlier comment that I made on. Yeah. So you got to carry that over. That's all I had. That's it. <laughs> See why these things take some time? <laughs> I read these things. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? You can, you can fast forward on TV, Russ. <laughs> Is he still first? <laughs> yep. Okay. Any more comments, anybody? Okay, we'll move on to the next yes, one. I would like to comment. Oh, sure. Yes. I've not been involved in the previous stuff, but I can honestly say I thought... I understood this. I think you did a lot of work on it, and I think you need to be complimented on Thank it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. The next one is <laughs> obtaining an M&T credit card. When we changed banks from Chase Bank to M&T Bank several years ago, we also planned to change the credit card. The new M&T credit card is now available. So we are doing the change with an overlap period to allow all Chase chargers to clear. <coughs> now, <clears throat> I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution. Be it, re be it resolved that the town board authorizes and approves a change from the Chase Visa business credit card to an M&T bank business credit card pending the completion, submission, and bank approval of the M&T Bank business car credit card application. Is there a second? Second. Any dis further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay. Uh, this is the AIM funding. I'll give you a little background on it. Governor Cuomo in his proposed 2019-2020 budget has proposed the elimination of the annual aid to municipalities called AIM AIM as we all refer to it. This funding is based on some New York State formula and has existed since the 1980s. 
It has been generally around $17,000 for the last several years. If passed as part of the New York State budget, Clinton will not receive the 17,000, which is in the current 2019 budget as revenue. This will mean something will be cut to account for the lost revenue. In the 2020 budget, this lost revenue can increase the town tax rate by 2.5 cents. The letter is being sent to our New York State legislators to oppose this elimination of AIM funding. So that's what it's all about. And uh, I sent the board the letter several weeks ago. I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the supervisor be authorized to write the letter on behalf of the town on AIM funding elimination. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay, um, the next one is I'm going to the Association of Town Meeting and on Wednesday they have the uh, annual meeting where resolutions and motions are all approved and I got to be designated as a delegate to vote, so this is all this is doing. I make a motion that the town board approves appointing Ray Oberly as town delegate to the Association of Towns meeting in New York City, authorizing him to vote on behalf of the town. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, now we're into Central Hudson Lightning replacement. So I had uh, David Andrick from Lime Energy, subcontractor of Central Hudson come and do an assessment of all the lighting of all of our town facilities, this building, two other buildings, highway, two parks, and we got four different um, proposals, mm -hmm. one for the town hall complex, one for highway, and one for each of the parks. Um, each proposal had how much it would cost us, how much the savings would be over time, and um, payback period. And the payback period, yeah. Uh, if we did all of it, all of it would cost about twenty-three thousand four hundred dollars. Um, the payback, uh, we'd we'd be paid back in a little over three years on all of it. Um, and after five years, it would we'd save thirty-eight thousand um, dollars. If I had to choose a priority, I'd say the town hall. Uh, one of our issues here is the library. The lighting that's in the library, they do not actually make the bulbs anymore. So the library is going to start going dark. And we won't be able to fix that unless we buy a lot of table lamps. Okay. Uh, one of the interesting things I noted in the proposal was the savings were predicated on a 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. Currently, the town complex here is paying 4.7 cents a kilowatt hour. So we're paying half right now. Well, it's, it's four and a half for the, the actual service, and then there's another 6% for delivery. So no, it's about it's 10 the, cents. Not the delivery. The, the, the savings is here. The delivery is not predicated on... Yeah, but the total, part of your total costs and savings, they're, they're basing it on 14 cents, is still 10 cents versus 14, yeah. um, because it's the total oh, cost yeah. of delivery and service to, uh, to really compare against. So when you're saving electric, you're saving both the delivery charge as well as the, uh, the, the consumption charge. Um, no, that's the right page. But it's still a difference of 10%, 10 cents versus 14 cents. Where did they come up with 14? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's just written in yeah, a note underneath. Yeah. yeah. So what, essentially what it does is it says the savings are less if you compare it to the mm -hmm. actual number, and the time period is more. Yeah. And I'm we, not arguing about not doing it. I'm just saying there was there was to be missing. Yeah, we want to we Right, wasn't there a grant that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was offering us switching over to? Yeah, uh, that's what this is all part of. Well, and, uh, there were grants for streetlights. Um, right. We don't necessarily have those. <laughs> I tried to convince them that the lights in our parks yeah. in the parking lots right. were streetlights, and they oh. didn't buy that. Um, and then when I when we counted the total number, we had nine, I think, in town, and they needed like 15 for it 
to be eligible. So, so you know, the, the one is the 14 cents, you know, mm -hmm. is, so the, is just too big. So the payback would be So the payback would be longer. Four payback years, five longer. years rather than yeah. three? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm just saying it's bigger. The okay. payback I estimated actually for the town hall, I figured was big, but uh, 51 months, which is 4.25 so years rather yeah, than yeah. three years. So it's a little bit longer. Yeah, because the cost that the town's got to pay is much higher. Right. Why, well, I, I don't know, but it, it's, you know, I looked at all of the things there. Now, the other comment but I... It doesn't have to be all all or nothing. You can do parts of it, We too. can do parts of it. I That's understand, but, you know, I just was trying to go through the whole thing here. Now, I did have some general comments on it. Well, the bigger problem is where do we budget for? You know, That's we right. don't have it in this year's budget, so it would be a conversation for next year's budget. But if we could apply for a grant in between and maybe get yeah. most or some of it paid for, I mean, that's a different you, conversation. It won't, it won't get a grant in between in time to, for this year. But I'm saying if yeah. we apply for a grant between now and, and our budget time, we can plan for next year. Yeah, no worries. Oh, shit. I need a sheet in here. Um, I had some general comments because I haven't seen the physical things that they're talking about, but most of the items that are being replaced are LED dimmable units. They're replacing them with that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when they replace them is a cheaper model because we don't normally use dimmable units here. If, if the undimmable ones are cheaper, could we get them instead? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, generally, I, I just don't know if there's a price difference Generally, the way anymore. that LEDs are oper are the direction they're going right now is consumers clearly want as many options as possible. So yeah. it's getting harder and harder to find LEDs that don't dim. Well, I'm um, just I, I don't know. I, so I just asked. Yeah, I mean, there there may be cheaper options there though. Yeah. So that that was one of them, and the other one, which I know is got to be very carefully agreed to and you know I haven't seen what the lights look like that they're offering here is these lights here mm -hmm. and the lights up in, in the, the Masonic, Masonic Hall. Yeah. if they don't look very similar to this yeah I had a conversation with we're David gonna about this. have a big community problem <laughs> yeah I had a conversation with David about this I, I have seen um, LED candelabras like this I had them in my own home um, they looked fine I didn't like the color temperature on them, so maybe that can change. What, are uh, they more yellow? It, yeah, they were more daylight, uh, and it, it looked terrible in my own yeah. house, but I switched them out. So. Yeah. So, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I, but they I didn't look. They didn't have those large bases. Yeah. On, on yeah, I think uh, I think out. when it comes to these and the ones in the Masonic Hall, we'd have to see them first. Yeah, I think you really gotta mm -hmm. see what it looks like, and maybe even bring a few bulbs and we'll put yeah. them in some place and just take an eyeball. But I, I I do think. Even if this is a project for next year, we, we're going to have to start thinking about what happens in the library. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They, well, they, they're out of bulbs, and there are two fluorescent fixtures that are out. Yeah, I know. And, and they're, not gonna, they're not going to come back on. And we're waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, donate. <laughs> uh, my, su my suggestion is, if the board wants to go move ahead, at least on some of it, because this will effectively reduce our electric bill. Yeah. Okay, so I mean that's good. That's a good good thing about it. I would I lump together the two parks, Fran Mark and Friends Park. It said it would be six thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars for the town yep. to do. The the problem with the parks, Ray, wasn't it that we didn't even own those poles? It's Central Hudson that owns the poles and we just pay the electric. So we would actually have to take back over those those poles. This is a contract this is a this is a program through Central Hudson. They're just subcontracting. Right. We'll change the fixtures. But they, I mean, they're saying they own the poles. I'd rather see us taking, buying the, the poles out from them. Oh, that, that's not been part of the discussion. You could check on that. Right. I don't know. What would yeah. be your answer to buy <coughs> If they're, if they're going to service it, what's the advantage? Yeah, is there an advantage to that? I don't know. I mean, it's just they're dictating everything to us. I mean, you know, the fact that the parks are lit during all winter, that, I mean, the whole complex is lit i mean doesn't seem wise to me if it's well, closed it's just a security thing yeah i mean but to keep one light on maybe or there's have only, it have it one. with a motion detector on the other ones or yeah well my my thought was let me just open the clip here so i can see it is 
the $6,329 for the two parks, which effectively was quoted at $2,080 savings, I'm just gonna cut it in half, just to make simple math. So we'd save $1,000 a year, you know, with the new rates uh -huh. of saving, which is good. $1,000 a year is, so is not a, bad. Three-year payback, is that what you said? Yeah, well, it'd be uh, six, years. six years, but that's, you know. Six-year payback. I'm just guessing numbers, okay. Uh, I think we take the money out of the development park funds. We got $110,068 there. And that would still leave $103,739 there. So we can do that, and that may qualify for the green energy thing, mm -hmm. that, or com clean communities, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever you're doing. And we can get a grant then through that to help offset some of the other stuff. I'm yeah. just, just trying to play the game. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's, that's feasible, How, but you're also gonna take more money out this year out of that fund, so don't, uh, I'm, I just don't wanna find out later that we did this and now the things we had in the plan are not gonna happen, yeah. okay? Because we are gonna hit that fund for equipment for the oh, parks I know, as well. I understand. That's uh, why I'm I, looking I, at it this I way. feel if the library is that bad off, then uh, maybe what we do if we don't have, I don't, you, you've got a contingency of some kind. And if not, Contingency we, is $20,000 and I had a $5,000 maintenance bill for the HVAC in my office area. And, okay. That's and, big wiping me out. All right, we still have that maintenance money uh, to repair things around here. Correct? Some, yeah. I mean, what is it going to cost to fix the lights yeah, in the library? Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't look at that piece by yeah, itself. Yeah, I mean, that piece for the whole town hall is 12000 for the whole. It's not going to go very far. That's for the whole yeah. complex, yeah. though. And I think we only budgeted uh, 10 in the uh, the maintenance fund, right? Yeah. But, I, I mean, I could ask David what it would cost just to just do the, the library and take out the Masonic Hall, take out right. this, take out, you know. Right. Um, the other thing, if we're bringing up, and I don't want to put too many hits on the recreation department, but the library uh, is a backup for the summer camp when there's weather. So I don't know if the library facility can qualify. Mm, no. It would be good if they could, but that, yeah. that, that would not. Ah. Sorry. Hey, it was try. an idea. Good <laughs> <try>. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me ask David what he can the, the do if it was just the library. The maintenance money we were basically allocating to fix, the, fix up to the buildings. The painting right. the buildings. Paintings. So, I mean, typically the Fran Mark Park is the only area that we can get, you know, the community development grants. So, yeah. you know, to see if there's a possibility of getting through the community development grant, you know, improve some of the park features like we wanted to make it more handicap accessible and, and so on, yeah. um, and, and then throwing the lights into something like that, you know, certainly could be yeah, a way to save money to, uh, you know, do some of those improvements. Yeah, Fran Mark Park is only 1,814. Yeah, that so well, it's, it's a small piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's but it's small. something. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying rather than taking it out of the rec. I don't see us doing this except by piecemeal anyway. Yeah. You know, and maybe as, things are underexpended later on this year. Maybe we can move well, some we, money we into doing another piece. We got the $17,000 we're also not getting from Cuomo's budget. I know, but I'm so just saying that's, even a big hit. that's something to look <laughs> that at. Been approved yet? It's not been approved. They're supposed to be doing it on the 1st of April. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's totally controlling all the government up there. So it's likely going to go through. <laughs> um, okay. So, could you get a number for that? I'll get a number for just the library, and I mean, I'd be happy to move ahead with Fran Market, but if, if well, I just was lo it, so. looking at it as a community development block grant stuff would be starting probably in two, three months, and then it goes awarding in like September with next year construction. Mm -hmm. I was just looking to try to get. Uh, Grants from the green community or yeah, clean yeah. community. Well, stuff we have to something, <laughs> you know, to get the clean energy communities um, grant. There's only like five thousand dollar blocks left right now, and we'd have to well, finish with our community choice aggregation law. 
Okay. Is that to finish all four? That's the last one. Okay. The other two have been done. Oh, okay. I didn't know. So we got to finish the community choice aggregation and then submit for it. Okay. And I think time is short. We yeah. we have to move forward on it yeah. with community choice like immediately. Yeah. Well, that's why I said. Yeah. I, was I think we have until maybe week. like July. Yeah. And we'll to to put in for it. Yeah. yeah. So that's my analysis of what we want to do or not do. I'll come back with more answers on next month. Okay. Okay. The last one is uh, the server. We talked about it at budget time. This is a server for the town internet stuff. We put the money in the budget, so the money's there. I make a motion at oh the server. Uh, the existing server has outlived its useful life and needs to be replaced. This new server will be purchased from Dell off New York State bid. The funds are in the 2019 budget. I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board authorizes the purchase of the new server at a cost not to exceed $3,719.26. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Any other business items here? Approval of warrants. Make a motion the town board approves the, the February general fund warrant vouchers 18 through 68 totaling $183,522.95 and the February highway fund warrant vouchers number 5 through 37 totaling $106,174.98. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Appointments. Are we going to do appointments? We have. Uh, oh, nobody, sent, nobody sent me any appointments, so I didn't add any to no. the agenda. Candidate for the ZBA and a candidate for the planning board. Uh, I thought we did the, the one. Well, we spoke with the ZBA person. Yeah. And then Michael and I have had some conversations with a gentleman who's interested in being on the planning board. We can do it next month. Yeah. I'll send the stuff in. Okay. Yeah, if because they're they're filling vacancies, so you want yeah. you know the right time here, Negro. I didn't realize you wanted to do that because I would have prepared the vacancy information. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Say that again. You didn't send that information to me, Elliot, so I didn't prepare oh, okay. the vacancy right. and the date okay. and so forth. I'll resend it. Did mm. you send it to me? Send it to me. Oh, okay. I'll send it. Okay. Uh, next one is motion to move funds. I make a mo. Oh, you didn't put the statement in here. Uh, I didn't get one. Did you send yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I sent it to you okay, I didn't this, get morning. It, so this morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me read last month's. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll read last month's statement. It's very easy. Yeah, I make a motion that the town board approves the following resolution, be it resolved that the town board approves the resolution of 28, uh, 2019, a resolution to move funds at the February 14th meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. That's that one. Supervisor's report, pretty straightforward. The February 2019 supervisor's report will be approved when the 2018 books are reconciled. No, no motions to approve or anything. Any other items that you want to mention? Yeah, whenever you send the information for the motion to move funds to Carol, can we just all get it since it wasn't in the packet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was. Oh. I didn't get it, so yeah, sorry. It was this morning this she morning. It was given to her. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> How's you have I'll it, I'll it send it to you, yeah. Okay, uh, anybody want to talk on public discussion then? We've got time. Going once, going twice, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, okay, just let me, uh, I make a motion to open the meeting to public discussion. All in favor? I second, uh, rather. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, please state your name. Very fast. You gotta talk in the mic. You gotta talk in the mic. <laughs> Talking to Mike to Identify us. I'm Brennan Carney, your new um, Dutchess County re uh, legislator. Glad to be here. Um, please reach out to me if you have any concerns. I'm happy to share my phone number with you. It's 646 773 1905. 
Um, I was going to give you a really, really fast overview of what happened this week in the legislature. Um, April 2nd has been declared Equal Pay Day um, in Dutchess County. Um, also, some appointments were made um, to some committees, uh, the most important being uh, an appointment to the Industrial Development Agency. There had been an opening that was making it hard for them to have a quorum, so they were very pleased to make that appointment. Um, and um, there is the, the legislature is working on examining the acquisition by the county of um, Lake Walton in Fishkill, which would be used as a passive park area with a possible link to the rail trail, which would be terrific. Um, and then the only other major thing, I brought copies for you all, um, is laid on our desk, but not yet for you all to we didn't have any review, but it will be considered, in, or discussion will begin in March, is a, um, a law imposing term limits. Um, so that would make, uh, they're proposing uh, six terms for legislators, I believe four terms for executive. Hold I on. thought they were all 12 years. It was all 12, so three years. Three terms. Exactly. So you've got that. And then there's also a bunch of proposals to the ethics law which I'm going to have to have another meeting before I can call out what would be different from the current one for you all, but I'm happy to keep you posted. So. But that's, a count, that's the county yeah. ethics law. Yep. I don't know. I'm going to keep you up to date. Do you want one? Well, sure. <laughs> Thank you. If you have that's my job. Thank you, you so much. Much. Thank you so much. And um, I've received my appointments um, to the committees. I'll be on the government committee and the environmental committee, same as Joel was. I'm filling those mm -hmm. empty spots. So thanks for having me. Please, please let me know what's on your minds. I really look forward to serving Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Anyone else have something to say? Public comments? Okay, seeing no hands, I make a motion to return to regular order of business. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I make a motion that the town board adjourns the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you all for coming. See you next month. Don't forget the workshops on t Thursdays on zoning revision. <laughs>